That's insane. All right. Hey. I'm ready to go live on the internet. The the chat logs are flying past. Everyone's pogging out of their minds. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to hit it. So I'll introduce this one. Um, hey, everyone. This is a special uh, episode of Talk to the Internet in which we're going to be interviewing slash just hanging out with a bunch of uh, really talented and interesting people across the different facets of the internet. Today, we're going to be talking about the Halo uh, modding and just in general how weird this game is and how it's put together with the very talented Inferno Plus over here. Uh, hello, Inferno. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hello, and thanks for having me on. Yeah, so for those that don't know, Inferno uh, has a very fascinating... Uh, resume, I would say, of modding in games. I think you started with uh, with Dark Souls, um, and then you've more recently moved to Halo modding. Uh, you may have, if you look on YouTube, there's a very famous video of his uh, Cursed Halo, um, which is, well, I'll let you describe it, but uh, <laughs> it's... We've we've played it on stream before with him, and uh, it's he's, he's very talented, so... Um, in the background of, of this little chat, we're going to be playing on one of his maps called the Desert Bus Map, where, well, <laughs> we'll see that in just a moment, but it's uh, it's just a nice drive, okay? So why don't we hop on in, and then we can uh, we can get to get to hanging out. Let's get this road trip started, man. I've oh, never God. done a road trip with anyone. <laughs> I've always just driven like 20 hours straight by myself, so I'm very oh, excited. That's... That's the whole point of a road trip. There's there's so much fun when you're when you're like with other people. <laughs> Wait, I take that back. No, I did. I actually did do road trip with somebody. Else. Yeah, they're way they're way more fun with people. Oh wait, we're on one team and he's on another team, huh? No, it's, we're all on the same team. I managed to. Oh, switching teams is like a process, but you can do it. <laughs> so there is no blue team. Yeah, it's just it's just us. Oh great! Hey, look at that! <laughs> oh. That is unusual. Go hop in the bus. Go get in the bus. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I did this for 16 hours with Boone. It's changed a bit since you did it, though, Bruce. Because oh, we're has it? playing on the uh, the Curse Desert Bus map, which is his most recent creation. Um, what do you have to say for yourself, Inferno? What the hell am I looking at here? Um, if you can drive this for more than 100 feet, I'll be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for our audio listeners, this is a Warthog with, I would just say, hyper uh, hydraulics. You gotta jump to get in the. It's on. It's on stilts. Top. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh oh my goodness! It is really just. It really is on stilts. Is this what it's like to wear high heels? I can imagine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, it's wobbling. Oh. Okay. Oh. That's oh. pretty good. Whoa! <laughs> oh, the the uh, for and there it goes. For anyone listening to audio, our our stilt car is just capsized, and it was terrifying. <laughs> Maybe we should find a calmer, a calmer the, one to get us. Get going. the limousine. Get go get the oh, limousine. So many good ones though. Yeah, look go, at this. Go hop in big the, wheels. Go hop in the limousine, dude. The warthog limousine. What's this tiny one? It's it's a short hog. The short hog. It's adorable. <laughs> Can we all fit in the short hog? All right, I know it has two seats, but uh, <laughs> it, it has no. the tightest turning radius of any warthog. Um, Inferno, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I I just have some like real quick questions about mods in general. Like, first of all, how did you get started with this stuff? What what inspired you to get into this? Um, honestly, I was really young. Um, the first game I ever did anything with was a game called Knox, made by Westwood in uh, 1999, I think. Okay. Um, it was like it was like Diablo sort of. Yeah. Um, and there was some tool developed by some random, like, uh, I don't even know who at this point, but uh, yeah, they, they, they basically made this tool that had a bunch of, like, hex editors, and you could do map editing for it, and I was, like, 12, and I had no idea what I was doing, but <laughs> that was the very first thing I ever did, like, modding and coding-wise, I believe. Okay, did you, did you know how to code or were you just like, no, I'm just going <laughs> to no, I was 12, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I, yeah. I didn't know what I was getting into, but I, I kind of figured things out slowly over time. Was it just and trial and error? Are you just, I'm going to fiddle with this. It broke it. I'm going to fiddle with this. It broke it. Oh, it did. Yeah. Very it. much. Okay. Very much. A lot of crashing. Uh, do you, do you have a memory of like what the first in your eyes, like success was at that age? 
when you made something that was like completely original and you're like, wait a minute, like I can, like, I can keep going with this, you know? Yeah. Um, there was a lot of little things, um, particularly when I first actually made like a custom map for that game that was like totally functional. Um, that was like a huge, like, wow, you can do, it's cool. It's, it's like that thing where like you learn like a, like a whole new like field of, of study. Like there's so much you could do. You have all these different ideas that come from that. It's like, it's like the, the door being opened to a whole new world kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I also remember when I first learned 3d stuff, uh, because uh, Halo, I modded Halo when I was, I would say, like, 2007, you know, like, when I was in high school, middle school. Um, and I learned 3DS Max at the time, and that was a journey, for sure. Because, um, and it's funny how far it's come, too, because I still have the, the really old copies of 3DS Max, and I have some of the newer ones, and they're just so different now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, I mean, Blender's now really popular, too, and that's, I... I think it's probably better to learn Blender at this point because it's a lot easier to get uh, since it's free. <laughs> so I guess, did you start with 3D modeling? So for those that don't know, 3ds Max and Blender are 3D modeling programs. So um, did, you, did you start there or were you starting with the, the map editor? Oh, no, the, this was um, years later. Uh, okay. I would say, because like the, the first games I modded were like 2D games, like doing StarCraft and, and Nox and games like that. And then um, 3D games started getting popular, and I remember I remember when I got a graphics card like for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you go to this, you go to the tech store with your parents, and you're like, "Can I get this like 128 megabyte graphics card? It'd be so cool, right?" You want Did the you... the the Voodoo 32 <laughs> FX yeah. or whatever the fuck it's called? Pick the one with the coolest wizard on the front. Oh yeah, yeah dude, the box art was so good. <laughs> oh man, dude, I was just I was picking out GameCube games, and here you are. Picking out graphics cards, I feel. Oh no, I had a, I, I, I had up. games too, man. I, I GameCube was like the best, dude. Had, there were so many good games. Of course, on GameCube. of course. Uh, but I also like you know over time I got more and more interested in it, and I, I did. I, I think it was just kind of like you know, I was a kid. I just wanted to do stuff for fun, and I just kind of found it fun, like creating things like that. And I just would do it uh, on a pretty regular basis, and I got better and better at it. And this is this is where it's ended up. So, <laughs> all worked out in the end. Yeah. Oh my God. What is that in the distance? I think it's slowly coming to the, fr the, the, the distant. The uh... yeah. Oh, you... it's a, gi a giant warthog. There's if a you giant turn the warthog. camera, like it, you can bring it through the culling plane. <laughs> yeah, it's slowly fading in. I, I feel we should do a pit stop there. We're about uh, for those audio listeners. We started on a one kilometer. We know ten kilometer. Eight. I, yeah. 10, it's actually like um, the this road isn't straight, so it's much larger than you think it is. Okay. <laughs> we have a at least one kilometer or ten kilometer uh, trip in a giant uh, extended warthog limousine, and on in the distance we have fading in a massive warthog, which I think we will do a quick detour for. If everyone wants to get pictures, you know, this is the uh, <laughs> this is like on the way to Vegas. This is the uh, you know alien uh, freaking. Uh, oh, be sure to stay on the road. Uh, there are, there, oh, there uh, are kill planes. There are kill planes if you, if you go too far out. Hey, good sir. for you. That's quality design right there. <laughs> I, I call it the uh, um, the uh, dehydration effect. Yes, oh, you of have course. Sun yeah. And you just you just because the know. road hydrates you automatically as you drive it, as we all know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I, I, but I want to get there. I hope, I hope the road bends around that we get back. Oh yeah, I, I feel bad for Lawrence in the back because I'm whipping this thing yeah, around. Yeah, I'm getting just... maximum g-force back here. <laughs> It's getting hard um, to play Game Boy. So, I, Inferno, I mean, this is, like, basically just kind of, like, a casual conversation. So, if, if you, I mean, feel free to, to, like, go off any tangents you want. But, like, um, I'm, I'm really interested to kind of hear how you went from, like, modding at 12 to, like, deciding to make a YouTube channel about it, right? Because I, well, the funny I, thing I, is I started to when I was, like, 14. And I was, like, you know, it took I a while I never really decided to do that. This actually just happened, too. I mean, yeah. I was doing... Um, I mean, for the longest time, I just did, like, gaming content. I would just play Dark Souls and cut up highlights and make mm -hmm. cute videos out of it. And I, I did that for ages, and that was fine. Um, and then I think it was... Uh, I think it was the, the Halo 2 Without Friction video. Uh, it was, like, a totally different idea, like, completely off off the rails for what I normally do on my channel. And people really liked it, and I was kind of surprised. And I was like, I like doing this, so mm -hmm. why not take the skill that I have and like do more with it? You know? Yeah, and it's super unique. I mean, how many like Dark Souls related channels are there out there? 
<clears throat> Vadi. <laughs> when <laughs> I was gonna say, also the, these dirt roads here, you can go on the dirt roads. There's 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 stuff out in the desert. Oh, okay. <laughs> we go down for a pit stop. I'm gonna I'm gonna hang a very wide left. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> dirt road. And we'll see what's down there. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, there's obviously everyone makes their kind of unique brand, uh, and it's just it's cool to me that you're combining a passion you had that's super distinct from when you were 12 with you know your modern YouTube channel, and then it worked. You know, that's the dream for everyone, right? Um, yeah, like uh, it's interesting too because uh, f- you know I, I it, it was just one of those things where I enjoyed what I was doing um, with like just making regular old videos about video games and kind of kind of doing a lot, basically doing the the kind of only Afro you know mm-hmm. Mimi Dark Souls videos, and this is something that's more unique for sure. And and I don't really think there's, I mean, I can't think of any YouTuber who does what I'm currently doing, which is making like comedy mods and like making content about like custom yeah. custom games it's it's really interesting and it's just super enjoyable because i could do anything i mean i have i mean what i'm working on right now um still still a lot of, uh, still a long way to go but I'm, I'm working on something for dark souls now and i'm like I'm making a custom dark souls mod and it's just it's interesting because I get to change I can just change to whatever subject I want. If I if there's a game that I'm interested in, I can do something with that. And like it, it's such a it's it's really is like there is any it's, it's like infinite possibilities. And yeah, the only downside is it takes months of work to prepare any of these videos. At yeah, all. <laughs> it, it reminds me of the old animation side of YouTube. And I know Bruce and Lawrence, you guys are probably familiar with like hmm. how that went. Right. Where there was like, yeah, for a long time animated two videos you know were huge hits but it took months to make them and then eventually the algorithm shifted to the point where it wasn't really sustainable anymore and everyone mm-hmm. kind of like moved to more you know well, easier YouTube, to make content YouTube, youtube couldn't monetize like really short videos because they wanted people on their platform longer which is really yeah. unfortunate because i think actually what inferno just said is something like a major question i've always had is like if do you have another like day job inferno or do you hmm. just because like like you said, it takes months of work to make one or two videos. So, how how is that sustainable for you? Um, uh, this is my only job. Uh, That's awesome. What I'm right now, I'm kind of like basing my, I'm relying on multiple things. So I get ad revenue, um, yeah. and I also usually have a sponsor deal now with uh, with companies that I will generally like. Um, good. That's good. Lately, it's just been NordVPN and um, uh, an energy drinks company called Now. And I'm cool with them. Uh, I like their products, so I'm yeah. like on board with with doing those sponsors. And I also have a Patreon thing, and that's like those combined is enough income to keep me situated here. Yeah. Uh, and you know, as long as I can pay my bills and eat, I'm happy. <laughs> well, the, the reason I say that is because like this is something that I think a lot of people need to know, especially about modders or uh, animators or anybody else that are, that are making videos like this on YouTube or any, anywhere else is that it takes them so, so long. So any way you help them out, whether or not it's with, the, with uh, Inferno's Patreon or on his YouTube channel or however else is huge for these creators. And what you guys are doing are, is it's so incredibly unique um, that I feel like it just needs to be encouraged more and more and more. That being yeah. said, I don't think this white well, hog hold on now, is. Bruce. Yeah, I I wouldn't jump the gun here. This white hog does not fit on the road safely, and I don't think. I think if he spent honestly any time looking at the proportions, Ooh. he would realize that this thing is Ooh. not you know is not safe, and therefore, <laughs> you know, bad modder. This uh, this road is actually too small, but making it bigger wasn't possible. Like, um, this map is actually so. I'm sure you're familiar with like Power of Two. Like you know, you have, you have like. You know, 8, 16, 32, 64, right. you know, 128, 512. Um, this map is exactly 32,000 something. Uh, it's, it's like an exact power of two in size. And if I make it even like a tiny bit bigger, it crashes. Nice. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> well, it's probably because like it's the biggest number that whatever data type they associated with the map size can be. And if you, yep. yeah, if you make it bigger, it overflows. And then you have a negative 31,000 size map. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Game, game design is cool. <laughs> well, it's interesting because like you're, you're tink- it's, it's almost <sighs> like, I, I make this analogy a lot, but you know, it, it seems pretty accurate. Most people understand video games the way they understand cars, which is that they interface with it on the surface level, and then they kind of develop interesting ideas about how they actually function under the hood, because all you get is like input output. 
Um, but you're kind of digging more into the motor. Like you're in the engine, you're in the guts, messing around with it. So has that changed the way that you experience or interact with games at all? Mm. Now that you know, oh my god, you've like cut uh, through the smoke and mirrors to a large degree. So with Halo, I, I I know a lot of details about like the inner workings of every component of it. Um, but recently, I've been learning about Dark Souls and how that engine works. Hmm. And there is some weird stuff. There was something I posted on Twitter a couple days ago about how did you know that every bonfire in Dark Souls One there is an invisible NPC standing on the bonfire that you talk to to sit at it. Oh. I saw that post. I <laughs> It blew my mind. Huh. What what have you named this invisible bonfire holder? The actual I, keeper, right? Not the one in the lore, but the actual invisible <laughs> model. I, I, th I think uh, I think bonfire chan is good. Okay, that works. <laughs> Does it have That's proportions? Like, is it is it just a collision box, or is there actual like a humanoid form there or something? It's actually intangible, and um, it's more or less like like a point that just sits in space. It doesn't have ah, okay. anything physical to it, but it does yeah. exist. It is the floating point, right? Yeah. Yes. Wow. That makes that makes total sense because the developers needed they probably the way they were designing their game, they had those sorts of interactions were always an NPC, mm -hmm. and they're and they're just like I ah, just throw another NPC in there, just make it invisible. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think it's funny because uh, I, I, since I come, Halo is one of the games I'm most familiar with. I, I always think of things in terms of like Halo's design. And um, Halo uses what they call a device, which is a special type of object that you interact with. Um, but Dark Souls does not have anything similar to that at all. So they, they, for everything in the game that's interactable, they usually use like an invisible NPC. And it's just, Ooh. it's such a weird, it's just a weird way to do that. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Huh, yeah, really I, I imagine like modding different games is almost like learning different languages, you know, and you like as you start to unravel how it actually works, you know, I'm sure there's similarities, but there's probably also like a ton of really unique, you know, ways and processes that it's done. I I'm really fascinated by that stuff. Actually, yeah, uh, it's it's I've... a very similar thing to like learning a language for sure. Uh, there's You're... always there's basically there's syntax to a game like in a way it's it, it usually is kind of abstracted out to the point where it's you're working with like larger like uh i don't know what to call like like uh like structures of of data mm -hmm. um but you know every everything is still can be can be kind of boiled down into components and like what things do and um yeah i you know it, it's interesting learning a new game and like how it functions and like how you mod it and i've 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 done quite a few in the time but my favorites are things like halo cuz one of the things i like about halo is that it's it's very um it's like everything's compiled into single files, so it's very easy to, to to like build a mod and then figure out what's wrong with it, without too much interference from other components. Yeah, um, I, I have a I have a, actually have a question from uh, my chat from Tsune, yeah. <laughs> and they're they're asking, "What are you guys doing?" Uh, they're asking, a, uh, <laughs> "A car just respawned and crushed me, so I, uh, <laughs> I'm gone." All right, it's 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 down to you guys now. Um. <laughs> Kitsune was asking, what's the weirdest thing you've discovered while digging through the Halo engine? There's a lot of weird things. Um, so well, one weird? of my favorites yeah. is uh, um, there's a lot of stuff left over from really early um, versions of Halo 1. Um, like like the, the, the pre... Like, almost the point where like before it was even an Xbox game. Um, for example, the the screen flash for the plasma grenade is green, despite the pl fact that plasma grenades are blue in every Halo game. Because originally the plasma grenades were green, and I think the plasma rifle was also like, um, like it, there's just like a lot of stuff like this where like the plasma rifle was originally the same as the plasma pistol, where it had a charge shot, and um, they changed that like right at the end of development, and like all the files are in the wrong places in in the in like the core, like if you when you break down a map file into its components, like almost all the data is in the wrong folder because they changed this the last second. They didn't have time to fix it all. Hmm. And there's like, oh, wow. there's lots of weird things like that. You'll find, um, uh, there's also an, an enemy type called an engineer. That's like huh. partially finished. That's not in this game. It's not in any of the halo games. They kind of took it out. Uh, but it is in the lore and they're like, um, they're like little squid monsters that are really good with electronics and they fix things. Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's really cool. I, I'm like, that's, uh, just, that's stuff I've never heard before. Do you find, yeah, you like, can, you can... like, comments in the code that were left by the devs that, you know, you're able to, like, unravel these things in these kind of, like... Well, it's, it's not the code, because you can't really get the code for this game unless you work at Microsoft yeah. <laughs> or 343. 
but it's just like what you find in the data for the game. Mm. Like the models that are not finished or like half finished that are just kind of left alone. Um, there's just like lots of pieces of things, and you can kind of find that stuff and, and reverse engineer what it was for in a way. Mm. Yeah, do you find that uh, I know like comments very literally tell a narrative, but yeah, you all you have is compiled resources. But do you find do you find yourself either legitimately tangibly uncovering a narrative or or maybe like imagining one of your own as you're kind of digging through basically it's almost like digital archaeology of of rumbling around in in the bits that aren't intended to be seen so i just i i know that i do that a lot whenever i play a game even from the even from the surface level of it just being like ah this seems like it was unfinished or here's an idea that wasn't quite executed completely and you can kind of sort of see some of the history of the work that went into that project i mean Gosh, what is it? If you, well, I won't, I won't go too, too heady into it, but like that notion that once people work on something, they kind of invest their spirit and their soul into it, and you kind of get that reflected back when you interact with that thing. Oh, oh yeah. There's a lot of spirit in Halo's code. <laughs> um, my favorite is uh, when you improperly compile an animation graph um, with uh, mismatched checksums, you get a message that says, Please have Jason push you around in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Someone at Bungie at some point, you know, there was some inside joke yeah. they had. <laughs> we just get the the remnant of that afterwards. That's you know? so interesting. It really is like a spirit, <laughs> like a ghost of the game that is like, you know, captures the time. That's so cool. I love that stuff. There's also the, the, the great story about how um, Halo 2's map editor, um, when you mess up the export to like a, from a, for a map file, um, you get a literal picture of one of the developer's asses, and it says ass error. <laughs> oh, jeez. <it's>, <laughs> and, like, they had to, like, retract the whole editing kit, and, like, <laughs> there was, like, a recall, because technically it would have changed the rating from, like, teen to M. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. Ever since Hot Coffee, yeah. If it's on the disc, it's part of the rating, which is <laughs> so strange, man. Oh, that is that is awesome. Yeah, the, yeah. I, it's uh, it was always so fun, um, you know, specifically with code, but to just yeah, when when it's, I don't know, we get these like polished products at the end of the day, and and often if it's from a big studio, a lot of those weird quirky bits of humanity get sort of scraped away, because you know it opens you up to risk. Somebody's not going to get the joke, or they'll just think accidentally seeing a butt isn't funny, um, but it is fun to kind of scrape away the layers where there is that that humanity left, where it's impossible to ignore that people made this thing. And they worked on it for years, and part of their life kind of sli- slipped into it, where they li- they liked it or not. Yeah, look at this um, tiny car, look at this small yeah. tiny car. God damn right it! Underneath them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. a, you want to take the wheel, Greg? Uh, if I can manage to get up there, I don't know. The thing's oh, pretty large. Oh, right. Yeah, Let's you see. may have to follow us back to one of those buildings. All right, can... yeah, I'll stay <laughs> far away from those feet of yours. You, you keep going. Uh, to uh, um, to extend the narrative to the audio listeners, real quick. We are now in a. Does this have a? Uh, let's see here. Th- yeah, what is the Thwart name of that? Hog? So uh, I think um, I think the, the 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 names were Big Hog, Huge Hog, and then um, like Mega Hog, Giga Hog, God Hog, or something, <laughs> or Wart God, or something like that. Was the, was the way I had it. We're in a very very large Wart Hog. Uh, we caught back up to Kraken, who spawned at the I guess at the uh, original the point in the map. I had to turn around and get him, and he just buzzed right under us in his puny small car. Uh, <laughs> um, this is actually the double hog. There's two different fronts oh, of it. That's not even so, the tiny one. Yeah, I'm I'm very curious to see what happens if someone gets in the other front, and if they drive as well. Um, only one person can drive at a time, but either seat can be the driver's seat. Oh, um, that's a limit of the game itself. You can't actually have like right. two people controlling it at once, unfortunately. But like, if I put my hand off the keyboard, then they could just start piloting it from the back. You'd have to get in and out. It's like uh, whoever okay, got okay. in first gets to be the driver. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I also have a guy uh, in my chat named Chris Lynn, who's a producer on Warzone, and I was noticing he was saying like, "Hey, if you like, if you want to get into game development, then modding is a really good way to do it." And I guess my question for you, Inferno, is: Are you ever going that way, or are you just going to stick to modding? So I actually want to ask a similar question back, but um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I like what I'm doing right now, and I'm going to do it for as long as I can, but. I do wonder what I'll be doing five years from now. Like, if if YouTube just blows up, like, because right. it does blow up pretty often. Yeah. Uh, and I had I had to change careers. I don't really know what I'd want to do. Um, 
I could go back to just business programming, which is something I'm good at and I know I can do. Um, or I could try and get hired by a game studio. I don't know. I, it's it's like it's hard to even say like what I'd want to do at that point. Of course, yeah. No, it, it's it's because uh, I think to me both both Lawrence and I have like we have computer science degrees in Lawrence. I know Lawrence programmed for a while, and I never actually like did it for a job, but I did it for a bunch of other random things here and there. And I know coding is very very difficult, um, and also it's a, it's a skill that I think everybody's looking for. So to me, modding in some ways seems harder uh, because you're reverse engineering the things that you're looking into. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm like, I'm just really interested to see what, what gets you, what gets you inspired every single, like to, to every single game you jump into. You're like, you know what? I see a lot in Dark Souls. So I'm going to go to Dark Souls and start and really dig into this project. What, what do you see in that? I, it's mostly uh, games I really like. Okay. And I mean, that tends to just be the thing that gets me started is uh and, and dark souls is the game i love for sure like all the dark souls games um they're just they're just really well designed and they're really good and they're not uh, they're one of the few games that has like no controversies outside like outside of the game itself it's from software is not involved in any of these like awful game development stories you hear uh, as of late hmm. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that stuff. Um, I love Halo because Bungie as a company has always been really great, and they've done a lot of good stuff in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the first three Halo games are all just wonderful games in general. And so I've always wanted, I've always liked modding them. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it tends to just be that. I, when I, when I, if a game, if I really enjoy a game, and I want to expand that, I want to like add to it and like create my own like take on it in a way. Yeah. That tends to be the thing that gets me interested and started. And then the actual process of building things is in itself uh, very rewarding, I would say. Like, once you actually start making things and, like, it, it's sort of like the, the, the tangibility of it. When you create a world space that's, like, on your own, like, you create something that you can actually put your hands on and, like, play with. It, it's, it's, I don't know, there's just something really satisfying to that. Yeah, Absolutely. And in terms of, like, the inspiration for a specific mod, because, like, I mean, you've got such, like, specific memes that you will, like, base a whole <laughs> mod over, right? Such as, like, the longest warthog or, you know, I mean, what you linked me of your new Dark Souls thing. I'm not going to reveal it in case it's 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 a secret. Uh, but it seems like you there's, like, a very specific either joke or, like, concept that you you seem to kind of like fixate on and then develop an entire like, you know, mod canon around that. It, would you describe that process at all? Cause I'm really curious about it. Yeah. So, uh, so it's just the first one I'd probably describe the, the, the frictionless mods I did were both based off of tribes and um, yeah. tribes is a, a shooter from a long time ago. That's based around um, jetpacks and frictionless boots. Oh, yeah. Love tribes it. gang. We, lo we, we love it. Yes. We, we yeah. love it here. Uh, absolutely wonderful games and um there's like nothing really like them these days there was midair which was a pretty recent one um but it was not very popular and it it, it kind of went under really quickly um but those those kind of games don't really exist like speed shooters all you get these days are, are shooters with ak-47s in them <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to create something like that and i i i had that i, I had that concept like i want to make a game that's kind of tribesy and and take halo as a base and that kind of came together like that hmm. um and it was a lot of fun and with with the curse Halo thing, um, it was it was kind of like a counter. I wanted to make a, a game that was completely counterintuitive, <laughs> where every aspect of, aspect of it was like <laughs> unmanageable. <laughs> and it started with that that pistol that they could throw pistols. And after I got that working, I was like, I wonder what else I could do <laughs> with the same concept. And I just kept making more annoying weapons to use. <laughs> and I just that just kind of uh, like it sort of like gradually. At first, it was just like a fun joke, and then I was like, I could make this into a full mod, and then it became, and as it got bigger and bigger, I was like, I'll make the video about it like this, and I'll just show all this weird stuff, and it kind of just, it kind of naturally just grows from that original idea, and I just keep adding on to it until I have something that's like big enough to be considered its own, its own like package at a point, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't, and, uh, you don't really start out with that end vision. It seems like you just start with like... Well, a, a thing you find interesting and then the rest develop naturally yeah except for this this longest warthog i had the envision at the start 
Mm-hmm. I just didn't know what it would look like. I was like, <laughs> I just want to, f- I have to get to that point. Yeah. But this was because I, I had promised, like, the, the joke of making the Warthogs longer uh, was like, it was just like a one-off thing. I was like, that's funny. I'm going to do that real quick. And I made like the two long Warthogs in the original mod. And I, I thought about it. And I was like, how long could I possibly, how, how long can they get? Just, just w- at what point would it break? And like, and I, the idea of that is funny on its own. Just the concept of like, how far can you make this thing go before it just blows up? And uh, I, that just worked. And I, I just I just planned that out. And I, I did have to go one at a time. It took forever to, like, make eight, 20 different warthogs that were all one bigger than each other. <laughs> uh, that, see, that was a process. That, I, that took I multiple people, days. People, yeah, I was going to say, people are asking, how long, like, can you... Can you say, like, how many man hours did it take you to make, for example, one of the longest Warthogs? Was it, you know, like 24 hours, like coding hours? How long did it take you? Well, once you got in the process, I was I was doing them rapid fire. It doesn't actually take a long time to do one of them. It's just the fact that there was, I mean, this this mod has 30 Warthogs in it. And most of them, some of them are, like, completely unique. Like the one that's just a turret with wheels. Um, or <laughs> and some of them are like are like just one big they're just different versions of each other and i mean like each long hog would take like an hour i think to put together Ugh. so you know putting together 20 long hogs is is like three days of work yeah you know, in a way you know yeah absolutely do you but, uh, uh do, you, do you feel like what you were mentioning about like pushing the boundaries the pre-existing boundaries of an engine or game systems I found a lot of fascination with that in, uh, or similar sentiments to that in the speedrunning community, how like they can sequence break or, or get out of bounds and they push it right to the verge of like, okay, we know exactly where the boundaries are that this rickety engine falls completely apart, but we can kind of push outside the boundaries a little bit. And what's, I guess, fascinating to me is that a lot of those decisions are entirely incidental of like, they dedicated 16 megabytes of RAM for this instead of eight. And now you can do all this other stuff simply because you have the room to play around with. Uh, is that is that a similar sentiment that you get when you get inside of a game's assets and start like nudging on things that weren't intended to be nudged? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of things. A lot of times it's like, for me, it's things that are in the engine that weren't used. Mm. Um, for example, uh, Halo One's code has, or, or Halo One, we don't have the code, but we have the we have the, the SDK. There's all these flags and like effects that are just not used in the original game, and they probably were used at some point in development, but were taken out, and they just kind of left the, the the remnant of what it was. And I find that those are fun <coughs> when you can like, there's a mechanic in a game that's just disabled, and you, like uh, like in Dark Souls Three, the poise is disabled, and you can just re-enable it with a flag. It's like <laughs> that's fun when you find stuff like that. And you could totally alter a game with something that wasn't really intended to be used in the end, you know. Um, Halo One has a whole bunch of stuff for re- regarding like weapons blowing up. Huh. Uh, like mm. originally, the plasma rifle, if it overheated, would explode or something. Like, something along those lines, based on what it's what's in the tagging. And um, you can actually use that to do different things than it than was intended. Like um, for the uh, there, there was at one point I made a version of the throwable pistols that when you threw it you had to go pick it back up. And it was really annoying to, to, to use because of that. Because every yeah. time you threw your weapon, you had to go get it. Um, but the way it worked was it, it, it actually exploded with an invisible explosion and um, would then create a new one uh, moving away from you. And so I was using hmm. a mechanic of the game engine that's not even intended to be used and oh, in wow. a way that it was never intended to be to used at all. Um, huh. So finding stuff like that is fun. I, I love that kind of stuff. That's a There's a real magic... To this when lawrence and i were making content at funhouse i know that lawrence and both of us we, we would always be looking for there was a specific magic to a game that was the game was kind of dumb but it <laughs> but it still worked and it still had kind of derpy physics but the physics were still pretty solid and uh i've noticed that you do that kind of stuff with these sort of cursed mods is that there's there's a balance that you strike between completely and totally broken and you can't play it but also broken enough to where it's funny and but it's st- but it still works ha- like is that just trial and error for you or have you started to learn a method to that yeah it tends to be um uh you take you take something that's known and you distort it to the point where it's wrong but it's still functional like mm-hmm. there's definitely a balance to it where like you can go too far either way uh, it's very easy to mess it up 
but like the idea is just that you just gotta you just gotta find that that balance between a warthog that's undrivable and just hard to drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exa- exactly. I, I think you're, you're really, really good at it. Other games that are obviously really good at it, like GTA Five, they have really, really derpy physics, but the game still works, and it still feels yeah, yeah. like it still feels like uh, it, it is doing what it should be doing. But it, but it's funny, and you're you're really, really good at that. And that's actually very, very hard to do. I mean, like this warthog. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane this, this is the widest load i've ever seen <laughs> but it still drives it still works it still yeah. goes and, and that's it's, what's awesome it, about it it's cool like, I, I don't <laughs> i don't know how much finagling this took on your part but like it functions much like a warthog does it's just with the added physics that you would expect of something of this of this massive girth like i it's hard to describe unless you're like behind the wheel of it but like it just drifts consistently because of how much surface area that has to cover uh yeah there, there's definitely a fact that like um a lot of it was automatic in a way where like mm. as long as i'm putting the physics together correctly it's going to end up driving weird just because of the shape yeah but some of it also is like i had to like tweak i i, I tried to properly multiply the mass and like uh, momentum of each vehicle based on how big it was <laughs> And um, they're also with the turret. I had to balance that turret somehow, and it does like it shoots five bullets at a time. But I had to make the bullets really weak to compensate for that, <laughs> so that it wasn't just an instant kill. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? And this one is. A, I think this one floats, right? This is the hover. Yeah, hive. it's, it's like a ghost. Oh, oh no! <laughs> it that was on too me. fast. It that was too on fast. Me. I killed on Lawrence. <laughs> All right, I'll, that, oh man! All right, this is gonna be a long trip. We gotta keep going back for everyone. Do you okay. uh, do you have an emergent term in your head for this sort of comedy? Because to me, there's some overlap in meme humor of like you start with an image and then you see how many times you can you can permute it. So you're like, how many different ways can I distort the warthog and to make it long, make it wide, make it tall, make the wheels inverted, make it have like 18 million guns, uh, but. To me, the punchline is when the player gets in it and pulls the trigger. And so you kind of set that thing up for somebody else to explore and discover on their own. I don't know if, if like, is there a term for that or is there acknowledgement of that just in terms of comedy and humor? Because I feel like it has to be something we're going to see more of. Uh, it reminds me of, like, those those goofy reload animations in, in Battlefield Hardline and stuff oh, like that. Oh, dude. Hyper. Uh, Hyper's videos on YouTube are amazing for that. Mm. He, he, does, he does this kind of comedy exactly, like... In fact, he, that's inspiration for me watching his videos. That that stuff really inspired me. Um, where he had the like the giant Glock, like <laughs> it's just a Glock that's way too big, and you have to like hold it with your whole arm and stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's beautiful, and it, I, I would say it's visual comedy, um, mm-hmm. but it's like mm. game visual comedy, and that it's still it's like interactive visual comedy. Yeah, yeah. the interactivity makes it so interesting because you basically I love that you yeah. set up a punch, you set up like a, a setup and a punchline, but you have to do it through almost set decoration, and then just kind of inviting somebody in to like pull the trigger on a limp nosed rifle, and then it actually shoots, and like the the, the <laughs> barrel flops all around like a little penis, and it's like the <laughs> it's almost like a at least for me when i'm experiencing content like that it's like a dare it's like there's no way there's no way this is going to actually work and then it does and it's something about the anticipation and build up makes the payoff even better i also say it's kind of like it's almost like a prank in a way mm, you're you're yeah. pranking the player mm-hmm. almost yeah it, it's that's kind of a way to think of it too yeah it's like it's, a prank but then you have to use it as like <laughs> as like responsibly as you can uh, which is completely counter to the point of the prank, but like because it's a game and it's your only option as a tool or a weapon, then like you still have to make do. I remember uh, you've you've gone down in history to some degree on my channel Inferno because of uh, <laughs> of your of the Curse Halo mod. Uh, when I was playing through the campaign, I know you have a a D twenty frag grenade, which is one of the features <laughs> of his uh, this, yeah. of his Curse Halo, which is basically. You throw a frag grenade, and there's uh, more than, I think, even 20 options of things that will happen when it explodes. Um, yeah, it's like in the 50s somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Some of them are good, such as a very big cluster bomb explosion uh, or spawning allies in a, in a warthog. Or, you know, uh, some of them are bad, such as spawning a hunter or actually nuking the entire map and killing everyone, including you. Um, and then some of them are really bad. Uh, specifically one of them, which we discovered on stream, <laughs> he he snuck in a model of a 3D model of Thanos 
um, who's crouched down and is just kind of jerking a giant Thanos schlong that is just <laughs> out out there. And I had no idea that existed until <laughs> I I threw it at a bunch of Covenant in a desperate moment. And then I I hear I see the explosion and I turn into the shadowy corner and I just see this this <laughs> giant purple grimace looking motherfucker staring at me with a just a third leg like tripod style on the ground and I scream and spin the camera away and it's it's it's, uh, it's yeah it's gone down in history on our side so thanks for that so, but also fuck uh, you. you know I, I was just say like uh, I remember when you messaged me about it and I was kind of like. I hope you're not actually bad because <laughs> I, I, sh- I should have warned you, but it, it is fairly rare and I had yeah. just forgotten about it at the time. Sure, um, sure. <laughs> I think it, I think it is like less than a hundred, one in a hundred chance or something like that. Uh, but the, the the thing is that this is actually like, I think a problem because I did not expect this mod to be popular when I made it. I had like thought, you know, it might it'll be funny. Some people will like it, but I did not think it would blow up. Um, if I if I had known how popular it would be, I would not have put it in. Because I got some emails about like, hey, yeah. this is kind of inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get that model? Hey, you got any of that model sitting around? <laughs> yeah, there's some of the inappropriate emails and a lot of the, where can I get Thanos yeah. model? I'm going to need that. Just, you know, <laughs> don't ask why. Just a little fanfic I'm making. Yeah, that's that actually yeah. brings up a good point, though, on, on a topic that fascinates me. I feel like I said fascinated way too many times, but this has been a really good conversation. So I apologize for that. But I, uh, I really like the... The, the concept of like making something that starts off as like a either an inside joke or like a small bit and then once it reaches an audience you didn't expect you know it's sort of like going mainstream and then having to deal with the repercussions of that um <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> uh oh that's uh real quick lawrence which way did you go because i'm going back for you the way that we came and i'm starting that... to realize you probably went the other way no 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 i i think i'm, I'm headed towards you guys it's just the road has a pretty big bend ah, here okay, so okay. i think i'll right. be back around we'll catch up soon enough yeah the road the road's a big um like long curving kind of switchback type thing did you do that um, to get more road in the square you were allowed <laughs> Yeah, okay. pretty much. Right on. <laughs> I, I need. I tried to maximize roadage. Um, yeah. To to make this as as excruciating as possible. Excellent. <laughs> Absolutely excellent. Do you do you find that through this process of making goof mods, you actually? So I feel like you have to understand the rules in order to know when and how to break them. So do you feel like you've you've seized upon some elements of good design, and now you can kind of fudge them on purpose? So like just the process of being like, well, I have a square. How can I make the longest road? Hmm. Tons of gradual switchbacks with lots of kill planes to enforce people to actually drive on the road. That's pretty good yeah, design, and, uh, and you're getting the effect out of the resources you have. So I'm just curious. Additionally, if, you could look at the, um, the the cliffs. The place where the cliffs and hills ex- obscures the road switchback, so you don't actually know where they are. Excellent. Oh, man, that's so awesome. <laughs> Did, so was that just an iteration and, and, like, normal game design? You played it, and then you realized you could see the road over there, and that felt cheap, so you put a little ridge in the way? Uh, like, how did, did? what was the process so, of uh, refining that? The, the first thing was finding out what the biggest space was and then how much like how much road that would be um, and it wasn't enough uh, Halo 2's limit is much wider like much bigger like you can make uh, the, the, the play space as big as you want almost to a ridiculous degree um, but this I had I had restrictions about like the total play space so it was like all right, um, I kind of came up with the generic shape, and then we did a quick test drive on like a really rough version of this map that was just like boxes. Hmm. Um, I got the concept of what I wanted, and then um, I did the actual work of I made a, a spline of the road, um, which is like a I don't even know if I can explain that one. It's a spline is is like a curvy line. It's like a vector. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like I made the spline of the road, and then I converted it to an actual like. Uh, surface and then I like modeled the desert around the surface and then I used some painting tools to like deform the desert into the kind of shape I wanted and you know just tweaked at it for a while and eventually it got it kind of right and then I cleaned it all up and did the texturing and all the actual like art stuff and that was about it huh. <laughs> cool. sorry I think I think I may have cut off somebody else's question or answer there my, my apologies well, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't I asked about the uh yeah, about the uh, making a, a goof mod that blows up and the, mm. you know... Oh, right. Unintended. Has it changed your approach, I guess, to, like, when things become, an, like, a small bit or an inside joke and then suddenly now is, like, reaches an audience you didn't expect. Has that changed oh, your approach yeah. at all? Or, you know, I guess, um, what, how, do you th- how do you deal with that sort of stuff? 
I'm more careful now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this is actually, this can also be kind of tied back into like, um, I'm more careful now in a lot of ways, uh, now that I've gotten a lot more popular with what I do. Um, particularly with, with the copyright stuff, I have to be very careful um, because, you know, I, I have had issues with this in the past, um, using tiny little excerpts and samples of mm-hmm. music and stuff. Yeah. You just, you just can't do that anymore. It's just, uh, they've just, they've kind of taken that fun away. So, uh, when I, when I do stuff, I try to think about like, what are the possible repercussions and is it worth it? Uh, if it's a little bit risky or not, um, it's kind of like when you, when you tell a joke, that's a little edgy mm-hmm. and you don't want to offend everyone, but this is kind of funny. So I kind of want to make a joke of it, you know? You gotta be careful, right? Yeah. Exactly yeah. what you mean. Oh, I was man. gonna say we yeah, we all know that very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you like I imagine if if like a screenshot gets out of Long Dong Thanos in Halo, <laughs> and if it gets popular enough, Microsoft may come knocking around being like, Hey, yeah. maybe don't put a giant Or uncut- Marvel, you know? Or yeah, what if or it gets Marvel. to Marvel and they're like, What have you done to our pure purple boy? Cease and desist immediately. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. I'd have to make like a like a an update to the mod to fix that if I actually got a cease and desist letter. I I cannot wait for that bug, <laughs> that, that patch note of removed long dong Thanos. Sorry, <laughs> you know I think someone actually made a mod to remove it. Um, I don't remember the specifics, but I do remember someone asking me about it, and then someone was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll make a version without the dong." It's like, you know, thank you for doing that because I didn't feel like doing it. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's it's killing your babies. You know, you got to go in there and remove this uh, this little special guy that you put in. Um, cool. I'm just I'm glad that when I discovered him, he was shrouded in shadow and like the corner of the map <laughs> because it, I mean, it made it more terrifying in some ways. But if he was like in in the bright sun right in front of me, I don't know if I could get that vision out of my eyes. But at least now there's some <laughs> some mystery to it, some taste burned well, into your cornea. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is that 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 image is like an image that's it's it is an inside joke for for me and my friends and we would send it to each other in discord all the time of course so like the fact the fact that that got put in there was because of that because right. they're the ones who play tested the mod it's your version of dave's butt or whatever yeah exactly except yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the ass error yeah mean, it's memes the ass error. Memes. i love it yeah um well speaking of uh people that want to actually sponsor us even though we have long dong thanos in our uh games and content <laughs> Because you were talking about NordVPN earlier, Inferno. They're actually sponsoring this podcast, too. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Talk to the Internet is sponsored by NordVPN. If you go to uh, nordvpn.com slash talk to internet. Right now, you can get the two-year plan plus one month free for 68% off. Um, right, I'm staring at the deal right now, and it says there's like seven hours left on this. but I don't. So I don't know what the new deal will be uh, when this podcast airs. But for right now, it is the two-year NordVPN plan plus a month free for 68% off. And if you guys don't know uh, know what NordVPN is, basically VPN is uh, a server that routes your internet traffic through another server in order to protect it. Um, And uh, they've got super fast servers in, like they have 5,500 servers in 60 countries. Um, You can actually watch uh, like region locked things like Netflix, um, through that VPN if they're routing through different countries. Uh, 30-day money-back guarantee on NordVPN. Uh, protects your data while you're traveling. Uh, obviously, in, like in public, like in coffee shops or at the airport or whatever. Um, there's a cyber sex suite which acts as an ad blocker. Uh, there's also a, a really fast connection that they've got for NordVPN called NordLinks that uh, increases the speed in the, ca- in the case you're worried about your internet speed going through a VPN. No data logging, 24-7 customer support, works even in China. Um, and there's up to six simultaneous connections, um, which is really cool with NordVPN. So it's compatible with most operating systems. It's literally just, you just install it on Windows uh, and you just click one button and it's on. It's, it's that simple. There's also an extension for your Chrome browser if you don't want to use uh, VPN to route all of your internet traffic through. You can just route some of your uh, browser traffic through the NordVPN extension, unloaded bandwidth, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, Go to uh, nordvpn.com slash talk to internet. And right now, for the people that are watching live, you can get the two-year plan plus one month free for 68% off. Um, but in a few days, I don't know what deal there, there will be before they were doing the three-year plan. Um, so who knows? It could be the two-year plan. It could be the three-year plan. Regardless, you're going to save it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 80% off uh, with the talk to internet code. 
So please support this podcast uh, by using that talk to internet code at NordVPN. Thank you, Bruce. Of course. Of course. And thank you, NordVPN. I, yeah. a, a important kind of theme, I mean, some people might be picking up on is, especially with the, kind of the uncertainties of a lot of the platforms that we make content on, such as YouTube and, and Twitch and, you know, rest in peace Mixer, is the, <laughs> is that like, we never really know where things are going to go. So the the only kind of common denominator is being able to pull sponsors that support the kind of content that we do and allow us to keep doing weird shit like what you're looking at right now on the screen or listening to where we are floating on a warthog through a endless desert map um with giant warthogs in the in the distance and i think that's frankly just a beautiful kind of byproduct of the the internet we're in nowadays so uh you know thankful to all the sponsors that make that possible absolutely Mm-hmm. Uh, I know, no, oh, Inferno, ahead. you've done a, an interesting, uh, his his approach to sponsorship has also been modding in sponsor uh, items or kind of elements into some of the mod packs that he makes. Um, I'm kind of curious on, uh, on what that process is like, because that sounds like a very, um, a very interesting way of doing it. I, I think that's brilliant, like having, you know, a segment of your video actually include a sponsored item in the mod pack and then you actually get to use it for the rest of the playthrough you know yeah that's that's uh been a fun thing to do um like i i love i love like making machinima bits for my ads because it's just it just makes them actually entertaining yeah. uh it, there's a big problem with a lot of time a lot of times during your ad read it's just kind of like people just skip a minute anyway um it's just kind of dead space in your video right um where i'm like i try to integrate it in a way that like makes it a part of the of the whole joke anyway like try to include it as a part of the video as opposed to just having it being an aside you know uh i am a little worried though technically i don't know if i'm breaking some rules with like terms of service by doing that oh using like like halo assets and stuff yeah (sighs) it might be kind of against the rules but it's like really gray i imagine yeah Um, that's interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't even really thought about that. I mean, there is stuff like, you know, Rooster Teeth's Red vs. Blue, which mm-hmm. I know they've done adverts and stuff, you know, with their characters, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think they have explicit permission yeah, from Microsoft. Yeah, they though. probably, yeah, they probably work that out separately. So it's hard to tell. I don't but know. We also if... have, like, a ton of ads that you can, you know, we run over existing game content. And what's to say we're not using the game as a vehicle for those ads in that case too, you know? So, yeah, I think there's an argument to be made that unless I'm like saying it's, it's, this is the Nord VPN is approved by master chief. Like, yeah, I think that's, that's the, that's <laughs> the line you cross right there. Yeah. Um, when it's just kind of a part of the joke and it's not like explicitly saying Microsoft endorses this, mm-hmm. I think I'm fine. You know, that, yeah, that's a, uh, but that's a, that's a really good question actually that somebody asked in my chat earlier. Have have anybody like reached out to you from uh, you know from software or three four three or Bungie or anything like that? Uh, reached out to you about these mods? Uh, from software is a definite no because uh, I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> uh, you, you never know. They, they, I'm sure they have people that speak English there. <laughs> um, Microsoft. I know one guy who works at three four three, and I spoke to him briefly. Um, he was actually the one of the administrators for one of the modding websites for Halo back when I was younger. Hmm. Um, I'm I'm wondering if he would want me to give him give his. Oh, you, you don't have don't to. Know. No, you, I was. Yeah. Just, they were just curious. <laughs> they were just curious if they reached out to you. And I mean, like, I know the first thing that people always think is, do they reach out to you and offer you a job? That's generally the question that people ask. It's always like, oh. no, oh, okay, I've never right. been offered a job or anything like that. Um, I, I've spoken with a couple people in the industry, I think, who have just found my videos and been like, hey, this is cool. Um, but not a, not a whole bunch, you know, just a couple here and there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess that goes back to what uh, Lynn was asking. And, and I apologize because I don't know that I remember getting or getting your, your real take on it. I think we may have wandered off or I just missed it somehow. But is is your goal to, to become a game developer on a team, or are you just really enjoying your creative expression right now? My, like, best case scenario for me would be to create my own, like, small studio mm. Mm. and produce, like, games, like, weird games. Um, How can I enable is, though, that's, this that's... in any way? <laughs> Please let me know. I, I just, I don't know. I, I 
it's it's so difficult like i i'm not a business oriented person at all i am terrible at that kind of stuff and i would be terrified of trying to handle it on my own in the first place so I, I would need a lot of, like, I would have to reach a point where I have a lot of extra money to throw around and hire people to handle the actual business aspect of it for me because I could not do that. I would be, I'm great at, at, at working with computers, but not with people. <laughs> yeah, I, I just threw your uh, Patreon link because I think this is your Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Inferno Plus, right? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, I just threw that in my, in my chat and uh, uh, I, I second Lawrence. I would love to figure out a way to keep you guys doing that and actually make your own games the first thing i thought of when you when you were like yeah we'd like to make weird games is goat simulator um and i don't know if you ever played that game or if that was on your radar at all but it's like is that the kind of thing that you're looking to make just something completely off the wall and totally different well i i think i'm actually more interested in like exploring genres of games that haven't been done mm -hmm. um like mixing things together that you've never seen before uh and, and like I've ha I have ideas, and I've kind of like, kind of like documented what I kind of want to do in some places. But it, most of that stuff is like totally unique. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not tied to anything like uh, already known. It would just be like my own idea, trying to create my own entire world space and stuff. And that's <laughs> it is such a process. Uh, I I released a small little web game um, this year, uh, and I mean it. it it was it was not a very complex game. It, it was very simple, and it had very little art and um, like you know, uh, it was it was just a really small multiplayer web game. And even that took multiple years of work to put together properly. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I <laughs> that's that's something for for another time. Mm. Like I'd have to. I, I'd really have to. You know, there's a lot of work that'd have to be done to even get started. Yeah. On like trying to build like a, a full game from scratch with a team um that being said and yeah it, do, do you see a world where you could basically because I, I think a lot of what you're describing is that you can kind of speed up or you can see this being more viable with the help of a team either you know on the biz dev side or you know maybe with assets or something like that do you see a way of integrating that with what you're already doing with your YouTube channel? Is there, yeah. you know, a specific... Yeah, <laughs> I want to hire an animator. <laughs> okay, great. So there we go. Like, I want to hire a 3D animator. I don't know if I can afford it, but I really want to. <laughs> I, I think about that all the time, dude. Like, 3D animation is so time-consuming and difficult to do well. Yeah. And, like, I understand the core, the core and the basics of it, and I can do it okay. But if I had a 3D animator, that would, like, cut some of my dev time to, like, it would just cut out so much time spent yeah. doing that. <laughs> I because I think that's one of the things that we really, or at least what what I'm really motivated by with you know this style of of podcast that we're doing is you know a kind of sharing your story and letting people kind of see the uh, the possibilities of it and how you know achievable it is, uh, but also like yeah put it, putting out that that sort of call to action right that you know if there is someone out there for example that either knows 3d animation or wants to learn but has never really seen a way they could actually do it in like a sustainable way like this is this is the new way of being self-employed is like finding mm -hmm. find of you know strange little side projects that you're passionate about and finding someone else that has another complementary skill and then cooperating to make something that's unique that can reach an audience and you know monetize in some way so um if anyone is interested in uh in you know in in working with Inferno, then maybe uh, maybe give them a shout on Twitter or via uh, Patreon. I think that's you know it would be a really cool to see what people put together with him. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I could afford it right now because three D animation is not a uh, it's, it's definitely not something you would do for cheap. Yeah, that is for certain. <laughs> uh, but it's like something I've always thought about. Like I think there are a lot of mods I want to do. Um, that would require like someone who's like full time and like fully trained in doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. They, they, I think they'll they'll come a time where I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll be able to afford and do that. Mm -hmm. And I, they, I look forward to that for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's honestly the the trajectory you're on. Absolutely, I, I think you're already you're already on the way. Um, actually, I don't want to I don't want to reveal too much, but 
is there are there any games you're excited about like uh, have you been eyeing a specific game and been like man i really want to get into that but i need an animator or man i really want to mm. get into that but i, don't, I have enough time is there anything on, like in on your goals right now for the next couple of years uh one of the ones i've thought about and i have not guaranteed i'm gonna actually i, I looked at the source code for it and i kind of kind of thought about doing this um uh, making a mod with OpenMW, which is a, a morrowind mm, rewrite project yeah. oh i want to use I was that thinking, before like, it's so good yeah, it's a wonderful project, and it's very well written. I looked at the code for it a bit. And I, I was thinking, like, wouldn't it be interesting to, like, um, rework that game's combat uh, into something mm. way more interesting? Yeah. Um, I mean, like, and this is, like, one of those things where I'd need an animator to do, I mean, hundreds of third-person animations to make this work, but make that game play, like, a Souls game or, like, a more modern third-person action game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, that that's, like, an interesting idea because it's totally doable, Um with with the tools that are available now but it's also a huge undertaking and i would have to i don't know c plus plus that well Hmm. i know it but i'd be learning some things if i'm working on that real quick tangent we just arrived at the blue base it's been almost exactly an hour and i think it's time to get this back home so let's take (laughs) take the long long road back uh oh wait this is the one i wanted to try this is the, <laughs> the, the thin hog. This is going to um, be bad. And Here. Inferno, I, I actually, I, I wanted to take this time to actually thank you because uh, you were inadver- indirectly responsible for, um, we just did a, a Microsoft flight simulator stream, um, a 16 hour flight simulator stream where we sat in the, in the cockpit of like a real airplane and then streamed Microsoft flight simulator. Uh, one of the longest flights in the world. Um, and you were indirectly responsible for this because uh, my friend Boone and I were doing the Desert Bus Halo map. We did, we did a stream last November where we, we drove back and forth for 16 hours in Desert Bus. And if we, if we had never done that with your mod, then we would never have done the Microsoft Flight Simulator stream. So, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, uh, I love flight sims actually. Um, oh yeah. I'm a big I'm a big fan of um, Isle Two, uh, just a combat flight sim. Mm-hmm. Well, Sturmovic, um, particularly based on yeah, yes. Sturmovic, yeah, that awesome. wonderful game, yeah. classic. Yeah, I I love those games. Um, it's unfortunate they're really time consuming to play and like set up because you have to you have to set up a track IR and a whole flight stick and it's like it's like an hour of prep just to play. But yeah. it's a great game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we uh, we would never have done that giant that giant uh, Microsoft flight sim stream of it. Hadn't been for a, for Desert Bus, which I know was originally a, t- a Penn and Teller game on. I think it was Dream was a Dreamcast or like this thing is Sega uh, CD or something. Was it Sega, Sega CD? Jeez, yeah, it what, was an old one. Oh, whatever man. it was, but uh, so yeah, so it's just I don't know. It's just a, a really it speaks to to what you're doing because I just I just think it's really cool that it, I, in my opinion what you're doing is sort of the next generation of Machinima. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and uh, it's uh, it's really fun to watch. I take a ton of inspiration from Red vs. Blue for for obvious reasons. Like, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's I, a lot of people. I've actually been I've, been. I've had people be like, "Wow, you're just copying them," and I'm like, "What?" Well, I kind of <laughs> am because I love them. <laughs> I don't yeah. see that at all. I mean, I guess yeah, maybe the way no. that you talk to the camera, but like that is just copying the concept of talking to a camera in Halo, which is like <laughs> definitely not owned by anyone. Um, I think they're just referring to the the, the style of it uh-huh. in a way. Like it's it's very much inspired by Red vs. Blue. Sure. Um, as a, you know, I, I watched that a lot as a kid. Uh, would you guys hop in this long, 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 long hog, and we can uh, we can <laughs> run it back to back home? Gladly. I think we can get there in time before the end of the end of the podcast. I think we have if we just make no detours, you know, no no potty breaks. Yeah, I was gonna say. I uh, mean, you wouldn't be able to hear me even if I needed to. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck turning this thing around. Rockin'! We Wait, need to pull it, over. This, can we go this way, or is this like this is the end of the world? This oh, way. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm turning. It's a simple three point turn. No problem. Just oh, a God. simple three point turn. There so, we go. So what's so for the people listening <laughs> in audio, this warthog is probably thirty lengths long. So if you think of one warthog, it's times thirty. Um, to me, it looks like a limousine. It's like one of those uh, Cadillac Escalade oh, uh, limousines. Stretch Escalades, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love those, but that's what it's a warthog. Um, and I fucking love it. It's phenomenal. Absolutely. Is this phenomenal. the longest hog, or is there a longer hog? 
And then oh, that. there's much longer ones. There's um, a much longer ones. I, I excluded a lot of the really exceedingly long ones uh-huh. because they don't they don't drive properly. Right. Like uh, you'll you'll drive like you go over like a, a two foot hill and it bottoms out and you get stuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and the longest one in the video that thing is a is an absolute monster. It's like scripted to function. Mm. Um, so it doesn't even work in multiplayer. Like it's just completely broken yeah. in multiplayer. And uh, that's also excluded for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, uh, the source for them exists, though, if, for people who want to play with that stuff. Like the, all the all the mods are like unprotected open source, so you can oh, just do whatever you want awesome. with them. Well, that's really cool. Um, if uh, I don't know if you can do this too, I'm not sure if this is like goes against what you're doing for your Patreon. But can you tell us a specific mod you're working on for Dark Souls or no? I am working on something. I don't really want to reveal a lot sure. about it. Yeah, you don't have to. Um, but I do want to thank uh, the, the people who actually are in the modding like community for Dark Souls. Uh, they have been very helpful, uh, particularly Dropoff. Uh, his his Twitter is just at Dropoff, I think. Um, but yeah, he, he he's been teaching me some stuff. He's been very helpful. Um, uh, Meow Artemis also has been helping me, and I. I, one of the tools that they developed is a C sharp tool. I like the other day I like installed Visual Studio and for the first time used C sharp ever to like improve one of their tools to to make it do some extra stuff I needed. Um, and like they they just been super helpful and I I really appreciate them that because I would have not made it, I would not have gotten anywhere with this project without them. I for sure. I imagine that especially with kind of your your growing success of your channel is you've probably found other modders that are interested in in helping and joining. Do you think you've kind of begun to assemble this kind of Avengers team of like meme game modding uh, <laughs> folks that that will you know are interested in in this sort of stuff, or is it still very much a, a solo project for you? It's fairly solo. I definitely get help. There's no doubt that I, I get help from all sorts of different sources, but uh, I don't have like I don't like um, delegate work very yeah. often. It, it is very rare that I'm like, can you do this process for me? Um, I don't even know if I've really... I, the, the only thing I can think of is the, the actual port of this mod to MCC was done by Shawnee Boy. Um, I just sent him the files and he just ported it for me. Hmm. And I, I really appreciate that because I don't understand the process to do it. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's mostly a solo thing. What I have noticed is that I don't... I, I tend to get positive reception when I like ask for help uh, when I ask for help in like uh, any of the modding discords I've been in um, there's always someone there who's like yeah here's what you need to do or like here's a here's a link to what you need to look at um, and I, I don't know if that's just them being generally helpful to anyone who asks or if it's just that they kind of know who I am and like they know that I I do good stuff I guess mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, I'm not sure which of those it is but you know whichever way it's been, it's been good hmm. Do you feel how, so? I got a little shiver when I heard this, so I'm curious. Do you do you feel like a badass when it's like, yeah, I just had to install Visual Studio and learn C Sharp just to customize this tool to do a specific thing I wanted? It sounds like you you are very accustomed to hitting barriers and then learning what you need to to, to move through them. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's definitely a it's a flex moment. It's definitely like a yeah, I just learned C Sharp yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. To me. Like. <laughs> I mean, to, to a degree, actually, like, once you learn one language, you can kind of translate those concepts. You just have to learn the syntax and the, the philosophy behind it. But Yes, there's always some stuff like um, the way uh, that the structs work in C Sharp, or I, I don't know if they're actually structs, but there's something like that. Didn't really know how that worked at first. Took a little bit to figure out. Um, but it's like Java. It's like Java with extra steps. Uh, uh, you just you said know. the worst possible thing. <laughs> Lawrence Lawrence hates Java. Yeah, I actually like Java. So I do. I, I do. I do too. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> give me give me my memory allocation. You know, I'm gonna do it anyway, Java. You're just making it harder on me. I'm gonna me- I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna mess up my RAM. You can't stop me. Anyway, that means no, nothing to nobody. <laughs> I mean, well, it's funny because somebody's like Java's trash so in, in my chat. Which is hilarious because like a lot, <laughs> most of the internet's built on Java, um, but uh, uh, yes, exactly. But that's the the thing is, it's funny just because Java is a, I think would say pretty easy. It's pretty easy to learn. I think unless you really have a hard time learning programming languages, and what do you, what do you spend like the most time in uh, using in terms of like modding and stuff like that? For modding, 
Um, it's not really much programming most of the time. It's usually more just working with tools and SDKs. Oh, okay. Um, but with programming, I honestly end up using JavaScript the most lately because it's just everything is JavaScript. JavaScript has just taken over. It's it's everywhere. Oh. I mean, Discord is JavaScript, isn't it? Right? That's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like it's like it, it's like the, the are you are you team JavaScript or team HTML5? And it seems like yeah, JavaScript's winning that bizarrely. Well, they're, they're the same. They're the same thing. I mean, you can't have oh, that's one good point. or the other. Yeah, you're right. They're they're kind of come like they're kind of like uh like tied together um in a way. Uh, Inferno, has there ever been a set of kind of modding tools or SDK that you have begun to work in or kind of start learning and then just decided it wasn't worth it and given up? <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna say skyrim as a joke uh, i i actually i didn't give up i finished that project but uh skyrim definitely tried to make me give up really there's definitely there's definitely that one was that like um, the sloppiest out of all of them you've seen it's i think sloppy is a good word it's not bad it, it is very it's like a it's like a swiss army knife with ten thousand tools uh -huh. but um half of them don't work right so mm. <laughs> <laughs> is it can so just kind of like putting your putting your palm to the earth and feeling the the rumbles coming up <laughs> do you feel like skyrim is for even playing it you kind of get the sense that it's it's like there was a base of bad or or of incomplete decisions and then people had to build on top of that and then people had to build on top of that so now you have these dev tools that don't function as you assume they would but i'm sure all the developers know the quirks and build around them or build on top of them which oh, is even yeah. scarier uh, that's that's uh, I'll call those pitfalls. Uh, ah, with anything. okay. Like, it's it's the pitfall. It's like when you know where it is, it's fine. You just work around it. But the first time through, you're gonna fall in it every time. Hmm. So there's <laughs> so you did a lot of falling, uh, tumbling through Skyrim. Then is that what? Oh okay. yeah, I I fell through many holes. It was it was not a fun experience. And I had there's there's the one mod I ever did for Skyrim. There's still bugs in it that I know like people complained about. And I'm like, I'm not fixing it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not now you're it. a real game developer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a known issue. I'm marking this as closed, and I'm going to go to sleep and sleep like a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That uh, I, the thing is, the Skyrim. I will say right now, Skyrim's modding tools are very impressive. They do they do things that no other game engine does, and there's a reason it's so popular and why it's so ubiquitous for modding. Um, but my god, some of the tools just don't make any sense. They just do weird things that you don't want them to. <laughs> and the camera controls. Oh my god. <laughs> that's the thing that killed that's the thing that made me give up. It would have given make me give up. Is I don't get how their perspective works in that editing kit. It makes no sense. It's like you hold shift to rotate, but it rotates around some arbitrary point. Hmm. Like not where your camera is and not where the mesh is. And I, I just can't. <laughs> so bad. Actually, speaking oh. speaking about uh, camera controls, um, I don't know if you've done this specifically with your own mods, but have you th thought about modding in camera controls to games that don't previously have them in order to achieve a similar level of machinima making kind of potential that some of the games that you've already made videos for do? You know, like allowing you to have like, a free cam mode and stuff to get shots that weren't possible in the base game. That's way outside my field of expertise. Mm -hmm. I'm not... Um, so there's, there's people who do this, uh, and they're very talented, um, where they just use cheat engine and they just reverse engineer the game assembly, like as it's running yeah. and they just figure things out. I don't understand what they're doing. I can, I can, I can do very basic, like real time memory editing stuff, like just changing values mm -hmm. and finding things. Uh, but what they do where they add like free cams to game that don't have them or like unlock the, like, uh. Uh, there's a guy who's called Lance who does this for like the Souls games. He like does this on dev kits for like PS4s and stuff. Yeah. And like he unlocked the the, the dev menus and the free cam and Bloodborne. I I that guy's a, a madman. I have no idea <laughs> how he does that. <laughs> so they actually watch the assembly real time and they can kind of piece out where in RAM to start to start poking to see if they can get into. Oh yeah. The, have you have you ever insane. played around with Cheat Engine, Lawrence? It is a I have a little bit fascinating um, tool. Yeah. I basically imitated, I think it was, I can't remember which Vine sauce it was, but did like N64 corruptions mm -hmm. um, way back in the day. And yeah, that that's the extent of it is I basically just copied the corruptions that they used that were uh, stable enough, one of those right. things. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the extent of it is just, yeah, that's the mucking around I've done. And that's on an N64. That's not on a PS4. That's not on a PC. That's like very finite yeah. amounts of RAM and everything is like nice and caged in its little pens and there's not that much to look at. So I can't even imagine something like Bloodborne 
and just being able to see yeah. through the patterns of data and, and uh, CPU executions and happening. So much happening at once. Yeah, I, I've only ever touched it twice, and I, I used it in a vindictive way, uh, which I'm not, <laughs> I'm not proud of, but uh, the game deserved it. It was uh, more time City of the Damned, ah. and uh, that game is notoriously unfair, and one of the story missions softlocked to the point where it was just consistently spawning enemies that were killing me or killing my, my units and I couldn't beat the level because it wouldn't let me. So in a rage, I went back in off stream and like just ripped open the game data and like live edited it to give myself what I needed to beat the level. <laughs> nice, and Kraken I, cheated. You, oh you yeah. built, you I, built a cheat. You built I, a cheat. I successfully cheated in that game, um, but then I covered my tracks well enough that <laughs> the next stream, you know, it was it was near impossible to tell. I mean, I've outed myself now, but uh, that game <laughs> that, that game frankly deserves it. It's a it's a it's pain incarnate. So you know, I have no regrets. Huh? That's a uh, it's it's weird. I, in front of this is just a kind of a random question for you, not necessarily something that I've, you've toyed in, but it's something that I've always found interesting, which which are game cheats, or like actual game cheats that they build into, you know, like that people sell and. Um, for multiplayer games, things like that, and I don't know if that's mm. has that have you have you ever does that ever cross your mind, or have you, have you ever talked to anybody that builds those things, or like do you do you have any knowledge of that kind of stuff? Because I I feel like a lot of the modding stuff is basically that. Um, it's also it's just, game yeah, you just, just modding the game, of good sort of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, see, I'm I'm familiar with a lot of that stuff because I've like uh, I I've messed around with and I understand like a lot of the tools uh, that I use for Machinima and Dark Souls. Uh, are the exact same tools you use to harass people in Dark Souls. Right, interesting. Um, right. It's just how you use them. Right. <laughs> this is the only difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a. I, um, it's just it was just an interesting because I, I. It sounds like the same thing to me, and I was just wondering if you thought it was. I I don't I don't know about the people who's selling selling stuff like that. That's definitely not well, legal. No, yeah, not sure. not that stuff. But just just like the you know like the they reverse engineer a cheat, and it sounds like kind of the same thing. But you're just doing it for fun versus. Yeah, there yeah. there's a lot of people who do it. Um, and like I said, I, I find that it's most common that the people developing um, the actual like tools used to do these kinds of like memory editing in real time to to make things happen in a game. A lot of people, the people making those are doing it for good reasons. Like they just want to explore what's possible. They just want to like unlock the free cam or fix debug menus yeah, yeah. or just make stuff. And it tends to be um, younger kids who take them and do bad things. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, and that's why they get the name Script yep. Kitty, generally speaking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fun. Huh. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, the weird byproduct of just hacking culture in general. Is that, yeah. yeah the, the real professionals do it for just the exploratory thrill most of the time. And then, yeah, the byproduct of that is that you get a nice, clean little executable that somebody who doesn't know what they're doing can just run it and then access parts of the game they weren't intended to. Yeah. Would you ever uh, define your your earlier childhood as a script kitty Inferno? Do you think Ooh. you ever you fit that category? <laughs> Charged question. I, I definitely I definitely had some stuff when I was much younger. Mm. Um, everyone does. Everyone's an asshole when they're of course, like yeah. seventeen. <laughs> um, I I actually wrote a Minecraft hack client and would go around and mess with people. Oh, that shit was funny. That's, it really was. That's funny. awesome. Let's that hear awesome. let's hear a story of of this. The dark side of Inferno's past. I want to hear. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Where I, 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 I like wrote in stuff so I could like track where other players were within a huge radius, so that I would like sneak up on them and like just do mean stuff. And that was it. Mm. It was just it was silly and stupid. <laughs> and that's. <laughs> oh man, that stuff is so great. That's uh, Minecraft bullying. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. My uh, <laughs> my example of that I I didn't use any like you know hacks or tools or any any scripts, but I. Uh, when I was probably, I want to say 13 or 12, I probably only 12, I ran a scam in RuneScape. We ran it like three times, and it was all with my local high school friends, or no, not high school at that point, it was middle school, and we would have like a sleepover and bring our laptops, and we had this really elaborate scheme set up where one person would be in the bank, and they'd find a mark, and then they'd start saying like, oh, selling, you know, blah, 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 and it's just like this obscure item, and then no one knows how much it's worth. You know, or, or, yeah, they're like selling this much, and it's like four hundred thousand each, and so everyone would kind of know they're there, you know, whatever. And then we'd have another person on an account with a high level character or with a name of what you would assume to be a high level character, uh, randomly whisper the mark and say, "Hey, I'm looking to buy whatever oh. that specific item is," 
and then you'd offer to buy it for a way higher than the value that's being sold for. What a grift. That's, yeah, then, that's, the, that's the oldest con in the book, but you just did it in RuneScape. There's, there's a yeah. name for that, right? For that specific... I'm sure there specific is. trick. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure what the. I mean, it worked like a charm. Like, I, oh, there's yeah. only. I think there's only one time that someone caught on, and the person catching on was just like, "Oh, I don't have any, but this guy at the bank has some for cheaper." And and, and we we're like, "Thank you, kind soul." And Aww. we're like, "All right, abort." That, and then we felt bad, and we stopped doing it. I think actually, we we're like, "Oh, <laughs> there are good people in this game." Uh, but yeah, because it, it feels like you're just like taking advantage of someone trying to make a quick buck. So you're like, "Eh, it's all right. I'll just make a quick buck off them." But yeah, that was that was the dark side of my uh, my edgy teen years in online. That's fine. It's yeah. how you street you know, smarts. Is... It did. I, I, you know, street smarts. <laughs> Except it's <they're> RuneScape. <laughs> the, uh, the street smarts of of Falador. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The the RuneScape like scam games have gotten so like crazy complicated over the years too. Yeah, like they've reached like unbelievable levels of just ridiculousness. And it's if you just you just don't want to participate because no matter what happens, somehow you're going to get scammed if you try like to, <laughs> really? to interact with any of those people. Do you have an example? They, they do crazy. St- uh, there's one that I, I read about um, where like they have a teleport that takes you to the wilderness, it's like a tab. Uh-huh. And um, what they do is they say, oh, I have a tele other tab, like teleport other person tab, uh-huh. but I don't have a teleport tab. Can you take, did you trade this to me and uh, teleport me to the wilderness? And when they click it to teleport the other person, oh, it just teleports it them, them, and then they get ganked by like twenty people. <laughs> That's oh like... no! <laughs> That's great. Does it not say on it that it's like teleport? Self? It does, but like they just don't it's read just it. It's kind of a trust thing yeah. where it's like it's like it, they say it does. They say it's a tell the other tab. You just believe them, mm. and then you don't check, and then you get teleported to the wilderness and die. <laughs> oh my god! That, there's That's like a funny there's like one. hundreds of these scams. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like. Uh, I, I think it's really funny, but I, I luckily I've never actually been scammed in RuneScape, so we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> and there were some pretty I, legendary trolls. Like Ultima Online was kind of my troll ground. Um, some I don't know. We, we don't need to necessarily share uh, infinite anecdotes about it, but the fun thing was is like if you owned a residence, you could lock the door, and then nobody else could unlock it but you. So you can like. There was, there was like, you would pretend to be wounded or something, and then the second somebody chased you into your house, you just lock the door and then teleport out, and then they'd be stuck there forever. And then oh you could come and, like, God. you could come and, like, yell at them and taunt them through the windows and stuff. It was fantastic. You basically have your own little, like, person in a jar in the basement. Oh, oh my shit. God. Oh, no. Those, like, the, the freedom of those games exposed some interesting sociology yeah. aspects of the human race. Especially, like, you have, like, 12 and 14-year-olds, like, running scams on each other. Man, it's great. Yeah, it's the Wild West, man. There's no parent supervision. You just got to figure it out. Like, even if you were to explain to your parent, oh, yeah, I got scammed in RuneScape and here's how. They'd be like, this, you know, eyes go blank. They're like, what, you you bought what from who at a bank worth what? And then you got messaged <laughs> by who? Like, there's no way. There's no way you can describe. It's just a personal, like, hell or vendetta. This This mark in your brain that you've got to live with. Um, I, I learned that scam because someone tried it on me and I like figured it out while they were doing it and then I, instead of like being angry I was like wait a minute that's so smart and then I like did it myself that's just how they convert people <laughs> did you ever hear about the uh, uh, the moderator who worked at Jadjax who was running scams no and, like, what? what so there's a guy his name is Mod Jed um, I believe he's got a, a rest warrant out now because like oh, he was like basically embezzling the game's currency and then reselling it um, by, like, giving out IP addresses for DDoSing. Like, basically, like, what? he was the inside guy for, like, a huge scam group. That is incredible. <laughs> and, like, he got fired and, like, I think there's a warrant out for his arrest or something oh now. My God. And, like, Wait, he, it, it's a hilarious story he, if you read into he it. He could get arrested for something he was doing in RuneScape? Yeah, embezzling virtual currency is essentially what he was doing. But like, also as a representative of the company, I imagine that's the bigger. Yeah, he crime. worked there. Yeah, he was right. like, he, yeah. he, he was like one of their like, big dudes. Yeah, <laughs> that's wow. insane, dude. There's so many amazing stories on the internet that are so like neat. Like, I they're so niche, but also once you understand all the different factors in it, it's just oh, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, it's super interesting. Like. We live in a world where where virtual game currency is worth actual dollar amounts and like, like stuff like that can happen. Yeah. Because of that. Huh. Cool. I'm I'm just uh, I I, I kind of it's funny I didn't I knew that this was that reverse engineering 
goes with a lot of different things besides modding, but I didn't realize that it, there would be so much more to it uh, in terms of like cheats and stuff like that. That I feel like we've all everybody sort of dived into that world at least a little bit, mm -hmm. where you're you're like you because I I think at first you don't you feel like it's not permanent because it's in a video game. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Which in some cases it's not, but I mean like, but in other cases, uh, it actually is very permanent. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's an interesting like psychological effect, right? Because you can convince yourself, you can rationalize it, especially when you're a kid. Like, oh, it's not real. It's a video game. But like, you really did screw over that person. You really did ruin their day or like, you know, <laughs> yeah. take something that was, was worth many hours of their time and their property in some way, right? And, you know, that like, that's a thing that as a kid you might not be comfortable with. So you find ways to rationalize it. Um, until you're older and then you're like, wait a minute. No, that was actually really shitty that I did that. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, Inferno, another question for you about kind of where you take your inspiration. Are, are there other mods or other modders that you follow? Um, maybe even like popular modders that you've seen that they'll release a mod and you're like, holy shit, that's such a great idea. Um, like, why didn't I think of that? Or uh, just people that you look to for inspiration in the modding community? Um, definitely Hyper. Um, he, he's the guy he does silly like crazy reloading and he's he's a really good animator who does silly things with it okay um he also he works for like i think he works for what was it like titanfall 2 Ooh. developer oh respawn one of those he works for respawn i don't remember which one it was he, he works for like some big company now though he, he does like real stuff oh cool um uh there's a there's a guy i'm following who's working on a dark souls 2 overhaul mod that i'm really interested in uh his name's stayed 3d um, he's been posting like uh, screenshots of it every every few weeks or so. Um, he's like, you he, he remember how Dark Souls Two was originally gonna be really dark and like have like crazy lighting? Mm -hmm. um, he's like restoring that uh, into the game oh, very slowly. Cool, and it looks great. I'm I'm super excited for that for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, anybody else that you've been like, even maybe just like following along on their career and kind of seeing where they're going. I'm trying to think. Like, I'm sure there is, but I'm just not placing anything well, right now. That's fine. Uh, the uh, the story that I I've always heard, and I don't actually know if all of it is true, but the uh, the guys that made uh, Counter Strike, the Counter Strike mod for um, for Half Life, they were like immediately hired by uh, by Valve, and then obviously they they mm -hmm. made you know they turned it into a full video game. That's the kind of thing that I was thinking about. Like, I wasn't sure if there was anybody that over the last like you know ten fifteen years you've watched them go from just somebody who was modding occasionally to uh, working at a developer or, you know, making their own video well, games. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the one, um, the guy I was talking about before, a guy who works at 343, I, I guess he won't care. Um, his He goes by Corn Man. Okay. Um, he was a moderator. He, he did a bunch of development for Halo and he now is, he was hired and works for 343 now. Cool. Um, and he's done cool stuff. He's done some really cool stuff in his career. That's great. That's uh, yeah. I respect that guy. Yeah. Have you, yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead. Uh, that's all. <laughs> have you looked, uh, or are you inspired much by like the source filmmaker community? Um, because I when that when those tools first came out, I remember I was like the end of high school, and I I dove into it, um, and was really fascinated with like all the potential of it. I know it's more on the animation side, but you know, it also seems to factor in so many different kind of mods and external assets that you can import into a game engine. That you know, I always wonder if it's a if it raises, if it's on the radar of modders such as yourself. Hey, uh, real quick, Kraken, can we stop the car for a second? Yeah. I want to get into, I want to get into one of these side seats, get a little bit of a different camera angle here. Do you want to drive? Oh. I, I've been driving the whole time. So oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just, she did, can you get into any of these seats? Wait. You can't get into the ones, there's, there's like only a limited number of seats in a, in a vehicle. So the front seats are the ones that Oh, work, okay. I was hoping I could ride at the, the very back. Yeah, unfortunately, um, like you can what? have seats back there, but they're like scripted seats, and they don't—they're—they're they're, they're really painful. To Got set it. Up. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm good. Sorry. Go. Uh, oh shoot! I think I distracted so thoroughly. My bad. Um, continue. Uh, but you were saying, um, what, what were you saying? Is the uh, source filmmaker and and how that? Oh works. yes, yes. Uh, I've looked at it before. Uh, it's super interesting. I love that it exists, but it's um, it's I'm not really familiar with source. Source mm. is one of those things I've barely ever touched. Uh, so I, I've not looked into it mm. much. Yeah, like I get what it is. It's like I think it's wonderful that it exists because it, it allows like w like so many wonderful animations have come from it. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, someone did like the JoJo Part Five intro with CF2 characters mm. uh, like yesterday. Yeah, even uh, and that was 
wonderful to watch. So, you know. <laughs> I just wonder, because, like, I, I think some of the best products that I've seen or been a part of online have come from collaborations with other creators that, you know, have complementary skills, and especially if you're looking for an animator or someone that, you know, that is interested in 3D animation, I feel like you'd probably find a lot of really talented people in the SFM community. Um, so I don't know if that's a thing. It's, it's hard to know kind of how to get involved with a community like that. Uh, but, you know, just, I guess, by starting and like watching a bunch of people and I don't know if you've found inspiration or individual creators that you like their work, but, you know, there might be a, a connection there if you, if you're interested. Yeah, it's, it's tough to, I, 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 there's definitely some people I'd like to work with, but I'm like drawing a blank right now for some reason. I'd have to like go. Yeah, I'm not putting you on the spot. I, I just, <laughs> just saying that like, I don't know. I, I, I wonder if you've done that before, like reaching out to a creator because you like their work. Oh yeah, you know, actually, um, I've tried a few times. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever gotten a response though. <laughs> I mean, oh, wow. I, that's what I did with you, bud. I reached out to you on Twitter. And I was like, hey, I, I like what you've done a lot and would you know like to, to chat if you wanted to i think that worked so well because i knew who you were mm. already like i was like yeah you know I, i've seen your videos before i i've known who you were since like 2010 or something like that so that that was kind of surprising to me in the first place you know well i got lucky then but i think there's other creators <laughs> out there that you know that that are open to that as well or i'd like to hope so because i think things are always better when we work together it sounds like yeah. a song <laughs> no no Craig, 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 I, I actually wholeheartedly agree, Craig, and I, I feel like that's something that, that even because I actually get that a lot, where I'll, somebody will reach out to me and be like, "Hey, man, like, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that, or whatever?" And it's it's not it's not always as simple as just like reaching out and be like, "Hey, do you want to play a video game with me?" But sometimes it can be like, "I've got this crazy idea where you know, blank and blank and blank," and it's like, "Well, that might be the right time for that right that that idea." You never know. Speaking of which, we have officially arrived. Whew. I gotta stretch my legs. Base, yeah. Let's uh. Let's get some corn nuts uh, and diet Dr Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> it really does feel like we just went on a on a road trip. That was really this, this was original wholesome. this desert bus map. Uh, the one that I drove back in November. That one was so much more boring than this one. Uh, <laughs> this one is so much better, Inferno. You have improved it so much. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's what um, a ton of 3D modeling will do when you actually like try to build a full desert instead of just making a copy pasting a road into. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and with this, we shall conclude the podcast on the completion of this flag. Any final words, the two of you, three of you, Bruce in the sky? Um, how about? Oh, I was gonna... You tried. <laughs> he tried to kill me. Oh, he tried to kill you. <laughs> yeah. I plant uh, the flag. I was hoping you wouldn't turn. <laughs> I have final words. Uh, it's a oh. it's a patreon.com slash inferno plus. And then what's your YouTube channel, Inferno? Uh, just youtube.com slash inferno plus, I think. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on and, and having this chat. I, I don't know about you guys, but I had a great time. I, oh, yeah. I yes, that was so very much. enjoyable. Yeah. I don't trust this. Kraken sizing me up right now. <laughs> ah, damn it! I didn't. I couldn't find my grenade button either. Oh, <laughs> I was hit. I hit every button on my keyboard. <laughs> I couldn't find it. It's just panic. Yeah. All right. Ugh. All right. I think we'll wrap sticky it up there. Me. You gave me the old sticky crikey. God damn it! <laughs> the old sticky crikey. How could you do that to me? <laughs> Thanks again, Inferno. Everyone, go check him out on YouTube and uh, Patreon. Um, if you want to see more crazy shit like what we just experienced over the last hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Cool. Thank Take you. care, everyone. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>